When you talk about public clouds, people want some type of guardrails around it. So join me and Kyle on the next episode of DevOps Lab when we talk policy as code with both Terraform and Azure. Welcome to the DevOps Lab. Today we've got Kyle with us and we're gonna dive into policy as code and how we can use it as guardrails in Azure. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Tell me what you do and why are you here today? Thank you. So I'm Kyle. Uh, I'm here from, from HashiCorp where I get to do all kinds of things involving Terraform um, and really you know, doing cool things, interacting with it and showing everybody how to, to really make the most use of it. So uh, tell so me a little bit about policy as code. Uh, so policy as code is is one of these things where you know everybody kind of grasps the concept of what infrastructure as code is, but you know once you kind of evolve to this point where you're self service, you know you're providing access to all of your developers and engineers to pro, you know provision whatever workloads they need. Well, you start to need some guardrails. You know you start to need to follow some of these corporate policies and guidelines. Uh, to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, excessively spending money within different cloud organizations, making sure that you're, you know, not deploying things at the wrong time, uh, you know, just things of that nature. Um, and really, that's where policy as code comes into play. Very, very cool. So I kind of understand the concept now. So I guess in some type of code format, I'm able to set limits, right, so that I can't spin up like, a crazy gigantic size VM that that costs like ten million dollars a second, um, which I would love to do, but my manager probably would hate, right? So, um, can you show us how that would what that looks like and, and how we would make it work with Azure? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Um, so there's this uh, there's this new capability that's that's available within Terraform uh, called Sentinel. And this is the, the policy as code management engine uh, that basically allows you to define all of these policies and configurations and rules as code and then apply them uh, throughout your organization as part of, uh, of these rules. So we're gonna kind of take a look at, uh, at our Terraform Cloud configuration here because we can use Sentinel as part of Terraform Cloud um, as well as Terraform Enterprise um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to queue up a plan here for, for our uh, specific configuration. All right, so we're going to jump into our Terraform Cloud Console here, and we're going to kick off a, a plan. You know, and we're just going to kind of watch what it's doing as it rolls through here. It's going to tell us that we're creating some things, uh, you know, a virtual machine. There's going to be some managed disks, all kinds of certain things that, that are basically, you know, supposed to be spinning up a website. Uh, that we can consume in the end. So there we can see we have nine things that we're going to create, nine resources we're adding here. However, um, there's this next little box here called the policy check pending. Um, this is going to run through and apply some of our policies that we've created through Sentinel um, and tell us uh, you know, whether or not it actually adheres to the policies that have been, been enabled for us. Um, so here it processes really, really quick. So we have one that passed. This is our Azure time uh, rule, which if I scroll up here just a tad bit, we can see that, there there we go. Um, so we're just checking to make sure that it's not read only Friday. Because you know we don't want our, our internal folks de developing things and deploying them on Friday, which you know they might let it run over the weekend and that's not really a, a, a good from the cost effectiveness side. However, the other key thing, which is something that Abel hit on, was that we're also making sure uh, that we're adhering to specific VM sizes for our virtual machines. So in this case, it's saying, hey, we're looking for a standard A0 uh, virtual machine uh, to be deployed and your, uh, your configuration file, just that's not what it's using. So we're gonna fail you. So we can see that our pass or fail. Um, now this is also a soft fail. So what that means when it comes to our Sentinel policies, we have advisory, we have a soft mandatory and a hard mandatory. So if this is something where we know, you know, maybe we already have management approval, we can go ahead and, and click on the override and continue uh, and we're off and running. 
Man, that's pretty neat stuff. So I do have a question. This policy as code file, is this stored somewhere in the cloud or is this stored in source control? It is stored in source control. Okay, so, so it's right alongside my sources version with my infrastructure as code version with everything. Absolutely. So here's here's an example of, of one of those rules that we were looking at here. Um, and this is just running out to your version control of choice. You know, in this case, I'm using GitHub, uh, one of my favorites there. Um, and, you know, this is just ha as simple as it gets, just us specifying what our desired VM size should be. Mm -hmm. um, and then pulling out some basic information like what our workspace is so that we can populate uh, a message, you know, so that you have some kind of understanding of what's happening. Um, and then the rule is just a true false, you know, very simple, very straightforward. You know, true, you're good, false, we're going to push back depending upon what that, uh, what that advisory level is. Very cool, man. This is super useful. So many of our customers ask for guardrails around their subscriptions so they don't spin out of control. Man, Kyle, thank you so much for coming on the show. If you guys want more information on Policy as Code and Terraform, check out the links below and join us next time on the DevOps Lab.